Batman issue one, uh, written by Tom King, art by David Finch. And let's start there. David Finch, surprisingly, mm. <laughs> art was quite good. <laughs> Consistent. Yeah. yeah, it's the best I've ever seen him put out. I mm. agree. I, I agree. Mm. Uh, it's actually quite impressive. Uh, I wasn't cringing. I wasn't complaining. I was just going. I think the it. really flat colors help because they kind of divorce it and make it pop out more. Whereas the colors that we've seen in the new Fifty Two, the kind of house style colors that he had for a lot of that, doesn't work for his art. I don't think. Nah, you're right, and it's uh, it's just nice to see. It's nice. It's nice to be pleasantly surprised like this, which is a uh, this is one of the things when everything got announced, we went, oh, well, that sounds good, but oh, we've got him on art, and then you know, it's nice to actually look at it and go, you know what? That yeah, wasn't too bad. Rebirth for him too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he has been rebirthed. Or yeah, reborn. definitely better than uh, than Forever Evil, right? Yeah, oh, Miles better. Yeah. So, and like like Connor was saying, the flat colors really helping out. Also, it was interesting that he didn't have a lot of darkness to work with, which is refreshing. Yeah. Because if if you look at it, it's still even though it takes place at night, it's still a pretty bright book. Yeah, there's lots it's of amazing. lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a lot of lights, lots of at times you know possibly fire, which we'll get to, but. Uh, no, it's uh, it's good. So I, I guess with that we can get on to the, the 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 main thing here, which is the the story. And um, I think we all agree that this is a nice big step up from the rebirth issue. Yeah. Um, I thought I really enjoyed this issue. I thought this was really exciting. It was a really fun action issue that really, and like mm-hmm. Connor said earlier, uh, the whole conceit of this issue is how does Batman deal with a plane falling? Like, you know, a plane that's going to yeah. crash. And we see this in Superman all the time. You see this in, you know, you yeah. know, he specifically mentions Hal at one point because he says, as soon as he sees the plane's going down, he's like, right, Alfred, call Clark and Hal. Get someone over here yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like, though, because other writers, you know, might have just had him tackle it head on, but King decides, no, he has super-powered friends. If they're close, why not lend a hand? Yeah, he, he's... He's got pride, but not he's not stupid. He'll yeah. go for help right. when he needs it. Yeah, exactly. And it does raise the question, before we even talk about the rest of this book, when is this set? Because if he's saying, get Clark, this must be set after the first Justice League arc and the first yeah. sort of action comics arc, because he knows there was a Clark to get. Yeah, yeah, I assume this was after the first arc of Justice League. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this doesn't really matter. It doesn't, but it's, it's worth mentioning that... It's- yeah, it felt, until you mentioned it, I really didn't piece that together. Because it felt right. It felt like, oh, it again, does. Yeah. we it say does. this I, I every week I did notice now. it when I was reading it, though. Yeah. So, but I just assumed, like, yeah, of course he'd call Clark. Yeah. Right? Like, because they're friends, so. Yeah. I will say, um, I think the banter between Batman and Gordon is great. In fact, one of the moments that made me laugh more than anything this week is after Batman does his whole ejecting out the Batmobile, mm-hmm. which, by the way, Batman the animated series Batmobile, yes. Uh, after he ejects... The big old bad head on the front, yeah. on top yeah, of yeah. it. If, if anything can earn Finch points. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. basically, what once he goes onto the plane and he calls it to Gordon, uh, and they're, he's talking and he's like, all right, try and you know, evacuate this place, do this, do that, I'm going to try and put it here, blah, blah, blah. Right? And then Batman says, I'm on the plane. And I love Gordon just responding with, of course. Of course yeah, you're of on course. the plane. <laughs> yeah. Well, he kind of had one of those two when Batman does the, the dip out. Yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. yeah. I always forgot he does that. Like, that's always right. fine. Yeah. That, that one just specifically made me laugh, though, because it was so over the top. And, like, you know, of course he's on the plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Already. Also, there was someone, were they in the plane, where they said, why are they, why does this have to happen in Gotham? Because if this happened anywhere else, we'd have someone... Yeah, yeah, if it was if it was Metropolis, you'd have Superman and so on. Yeah, right. I like that too. Yeah, I also so... I love the, the teenage kid or whoever he is looking out the window and just seeing Batman on the wing. It's a really nice image. <laughs> yeah, it is good. It's kind yeah. of Twilight Zone esque. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the the bat signal when the kids looking out the window, you can see it in the clouds on the bottom, which is a pretty cool touch. Let you know where you are. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, and I think I think the actions handled really well. Like him. Mm. on the plane and like diving around and putting these thrusters under the wings and yeah. then as over the top as it is 
Batman like firing these thrusters off and tilting the plane to go between the buildings so it doesn't hit well, anything? Yeah, but he has help from Duke. Like, well, he, and he, that's he, what he, I liked. he does, but like it's just such a badass over the top like image of yeah. him like steering a plane, just stood on top of it like yeah. steering. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, cool. like, it's like he's uh, on a carriage with horses holding the, mm-hmm. the, the <laughs> he's yeah. on a plane. Yeah. But and and the only reason I bring up Duke though is because they set up an end game that like he's not end game, the last one super heavy, that yeah. he's he's like genius level too like so the fact that he had him calculate this stuff out yeah cause so he could you know steer the plane I thought was pretty cool what what I liked about it as well because Matt something you don't like with Batman sometimes is how mm-hmm. they'll make him be too much of a like impossible odds defying badass yep. and what I like here is that he, he really skirted the line where Duke's like right well I've got something but it's not going to be easy and he, he responds with yeah. I don't need easy I just need an angle and I'm like yeah. you know I like that I like that he's been a bad that's a total badass line but it's not it's not bad god yeah it's not bad god no. it's like yeah I know it's going to be tough but that's like... been consistent across Rebirth like him asking Duke for help uh, in, in Detective where he goes to Batwoman and says yep. you can do this better than me it's he's, it's all he knows his limits even in this Batman with up, wow. humility yeah. yeah and so and the fact that he goes you want me to put the yellow on and he goes no I need you I need your brain mm. so I thought that was cool because that adds a different relationship with this character than he has with other guys he's been training so or he has trained uh, so it's funny it's exciting and then at the end it actually gets uh somewhat emotional as Batman realises that he's probably going to die landing this plane in the water. Uh, Now, of course, it's a little bit cynical because you kind of, like, okay, it's Batman issue one, Batman's not going to (laughs) die. It doesn't matter, though, does it? It's so well written that this, like, conversation... I I like parts of it until he asks, is this a good death? And then I was like... Do we have to? Yeah, sure. That... that part is is maybe a touch too far, but all the rest and... of it, like him yeah. saying, t- him telling uh, Duke that he should uh, go to Dick and all that stuff. I like I that. Really I really like that. Love that. Uh, that ties in with something in Justice League actually. But I loved mm. Batman's respect of Dick uh, in yeah. this book. But that line is phenomenal, especially as a Dick fan. It's just it's really nice. Yeah, it was that part that was like getting me. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. That that was. From that... henceforth, I refuse to call him Dick. Uh, he will be called Grayson, because I'm not gonna have a slip for Pete to use against me later. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen at some point. Let's hey, face Matt, it. on this podcast, yeah. we love Dick, yes, right? Yes, you do. Just, just. I, I love Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the key thing there was. He was saying we. And Matt was like, yeah. no, I'm going to say I, but I'm not going to yeah. say the whole sentence. Because <laughs> I, 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 I've been tricked by him before, so uh, not going to happen. But no, I did like, and he was talking to Alfred about his parents. And, you know, it was Batman looking in the face of his mortality. And that's another thing you don't see very often. Mm-hmm. So, because he always, yeah. again, like Pete was saying, he's this guy that always... You know, he's the John Cena of comics. He rises above everything. And Always finds a way. Yeah, so... And at least this way it was plausible, and it and the reveal of how he does survive it was a nice yeah. touch. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but beyond just talking about how cool it is that Batman has to deal with something that Superman usually has to deal mm-hmm. with, um, we do have... like the Obviously, someone fires a rocket launcher to do this. Um, which, by the yeah. way, I really like seeing that in the like while Batman and Gordon are talking. You just see like the panels yeah. like of that in the the background and stuff. I really like that. But uh, and it's Cobra, but not GI Joe Cobra. It's like old school DC paramilitary group yeah. Cobra. And we have a mysterious figure uh, on the roof just before the end, who yeah. says, "Observe the clock, Batman." Now it was pointed out to me yeah. mm-hmm. uh, from one of our buddies on uh, the Mailed Fuss Facebook group that. It says observe the clock, Batman, and then the next page, which is the page with uh, all the emotional stuff, uh, Mm -hmm. is a nine-panel page, all evenly laid out. Now, if you're familiar with Watchmen, almost every page of that fucking book (laughs) is in nine panels. Yep. So, this could be us reading into this a little bit too much, or it could be very intentional. Yeah, I'm There's no such thing as a coincidence. Because this guy saying it isn't the guy who fired the rocket. 
No, it's not. No. Because he's obviously killed the guy who has. Well, I took that as that was Cobra with a cyanide caplet. But his head's right? blown off, isn't it? He's got a shot inside uh, of his head. Yeah, so yeah, it does. I, so then I did not read that page as closely as I thought I did. Yeah, no, no one's got a shot inside <laughs> of his head. There's actually like a stream of blood pouring from his body. Yeah. Okay, again, <laughs> did not read that page because I wanted to get to the next page to see what was up. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and do you know what I like about the, the save then? So the, the plane's about to hit the water and we can see the two figures like catch the plane just as it's about to hit. And what I like about it is it's so far away that it does actually kind of look like it might be Superman and Supergirl. Yeah. It looks like Clark and Kara. It's and the then, blue, isn't it? Yeah, it's the blue and they're so far away. And then you turn to the last page. And of course, because it's on the front cover, we're, <laughs> we're expecting these two to show up. But uh, yeah. these two new characters who are named Gotham and Gotham Girl. They seem so old school. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm. and and that's the name of the story is I Am Gotham. Which kind of flips it on its head because as a mm -hmm. Batman fan, you kind of read that title and go, okay, this is going to be about how Batman's a part of the city. And, you know, that's what it's going to be about. It's going to be like a, a metaphor yeah. type thing. And then not the end, you're like, oh no, it's literally there's a character saying I am Gotham. <laughs> yeah. So, that's cool. And I do, I do like the touch that they've got the G inside the Superman emblem. Is there? Yeah. yeah, I like how even Batman like thinks it's Clark as well. Yeah, he's like he just assumes that Clark was there for him at that point. Right. So and I, I thought this was an excellent first issue. I thought it was exciting. I thought it was funny. I thought it was emotional. I thought I got the voices down, and the ending was actually really exciting and really set up a nice big cliffhanger of who these characters are. So. And we get more in what? Uh, two, two, weeks. two weeks. Well, three weeks. Yeah. Three. So a week yeah. off. Three. So. Gotcha. All right. But Damn no, it, five Wednesdays. Cool. I know. Yes. Strip it five Wednesdays month. I dare it. But no, that was a great issue. Uh, really, really, really enjoyed that. 